Yes, indeed. Good afternoon. I know, me again, one little viewer. What an afternoon we are having so far. Is it nice where you are? Oh, it's glorious on the way in. 22 degrees. Just what the car said. Anyway, I digress. What an hour I have for you. I even have a little treat in store. I know. I know. We're talking about a living legend I've got in the studio with me. A massive following around the world. She's international. And I'm not just talking about Boundle and Peterborough. I'm talking further afield across the globe. She's known throughout the world. I'm going to get her straight in before we talk about any of this that I've got in front of me. It's the one, the only. Please, at home, if you can, be upstanding. It's Jenny Raymond, everyone. Yes! <laughs> The legend is here. How are you, my love? I'm absolutely fine, thank you. You've now bigged me up. So what on earth am I going to do? I can't let the side down. You don't need to do anything. Just be here. Just just you being here is good enough for us. Welcome to the Chanda thank family, you. Jenny, my thank love. Thank you, Adam. It's a pleasure to have you here. And it's a pleasure to be here. This so. is good, because you've got a wealth of... And as I said in my introduction, yes, it was grand, and it needs to be grand, but you are... Um, renowned throughout the world now for textiles. You are you are a big name in the soft craft I world. I am the world's only twiddler, fiddler, nipper, tucker, manipulator and manoeuvre of material. I'll have you know, sir. Now you're really right. Then. Let's <laughs> crack straight on because we've got a lot of things to get through. Now, if you've never sewn before, what a day to start. Uh, you have a masterclass on hand here. Uh, we've got so many things on this show, and if you're already into the world of soft craft, we may have things that you want to add to your collection. Now, we've got bundles. I'm going to show you things as bundles, but everything you're about to see is also individual as well. Individuals will be at the bottom of the screen, down the side of the screen, will be the bundles. Now, obviously, the value for money, if your budget will stretch, will be to go for the bundles, because you're going to get these larger savings that are down here. Right then, let's kick straight off. 538823 is your item number. This is the Easy Quilting, Easy Patch Bundle. Now, you get, if you've never sewn, never made a quilt, never, never dabbled in the world of soft crafts, you need a place to start. And what a place this is. You are getting a DVD, oh, sorry, look at me using a pen, uh, a DVD, <laughs> yeah. Um, you're using your DVD with two hours of tutorial uh, from our Jenny on here. And then you get your rulers as well. Now, I'm a bit like you when it comes to rulers. I think, well, one ruler does the same job. Surely I don't need three rulers. Jenny, what do I need three rulers for? Does one not do the rest that the others will do? No, sorry. Well, yes, I suppose you could use the one ruler, but you need the big ruler for your strips. You need the square to cut accurate squares and the what's known as a half square triangle, sometimes called an HST, uh, will do what is a half a square. <coughs> so it's a square chopped diagonally. Now that has already added into it the all important seam allowance and it will save you, wait for it, three eighths of an inch on every half square triangle you cut out. Well, I'm there, I'm there, I'm, I'm there already. See, this is what I like about Jenny, she makes things easy. It's not, it's not confusing science. It doesn't baffle you anymore. There's no jargon. It's straight to the point. A spade is a spade. Uh, but the DVD that we're talking about as well, what, what, uh, what are we going to find right, on okay. the DVD? What I do on the DVD is I take you through six blocks. You, you learn as you go. So we deal with fabrics. We deal with rotary cutting, how you do it. We take strips. We do something called rail fence. When you've mastered strips, we do log cabin, very traditional patchwork block. Then we bring in squares, so you learn how to stitch squares together, check your seam allowance, do a bit of applique, and then move into half square triangles so you can learn to piece together a myriad arrangement of blocks. We were busy already, so what we're going to do is we're going to go straight into a demo. Excellent. We're going to demo, the w so we're going to go straight in to the demonstration for our first bundle. Now, if you're wondering what these will create, it's this behind me. Uh, you're saving £18 on this, £29.96, but this is what you're about to, to create. Now, if you look at this and think, mm, I'd rather have a different combination. Once you've got the skills, once you've got the techniques, you are good to go. It's then down to you on how you want to travel on your journey. Right then, uh, Jenny, it's all yours. Where are we looking at? Where are we about to start? Right, well, I'm going to just start with briefly discussing and pointing out the various things you're going to do. In the DVD, there's a little leaflet, and this shows you the six different blocks. So your first one will deal with strips, and your second one will deal with log cabin, etc., etc. What I wanted to show you was how to use the half square triangle ruler, because this is going to make your life so very easy. Cutting strips is simple. 
So just very briefly to show you how the ruler works, these rulers are marked out in one inch increments because in the patchwork world we tend to use imperial. So to cut a strip, you would simply lay your fabric in front of you, having neatened off the edge, and you can bring the ruler in. Now I'm right-handed, so I bring the ruler in from the left-hand side. And there it is measuring two inches, there it is measuring three inches, etc., etc. And I have a rotary cutter, and I would simply cut. I happen to have a four and a half inch uh, strip in front of me, so I moved the ruler until it came up to the four and a half inch line. There is four, there is four and a half. So I cut a four and a half inch strip. Suppose you wanted to cut a square, then an easy way of cutting a square is take your fabric, and if I only wanted a little square, turn the square ruler around until you get the one, in my case the left hand corner, if you were left handed it would be the other way around, and the square eats its way onto the fabric. Can you see it's now eaten two inches of material? Okay. You will then cut up there and along there. So that's why that's useful. The strip rule is good too. But it's a half square triangle I wanted to show you because I mentioned it saved you seam allowance. And the reason why it saved you seam allowance is it's missing a bit off the end. So don't think, oh my goodness me, I've lost the point off my triangle. That's actually meant to be there. Down the centre here is your seam allowance. Now, in the patchwork world, we work on a quarter of an inch. Ignore the red marker so I don't lose it, because you lend it to students, you don't get it back. Incidentally, it's always worth marking your rotary cutters, marking your various templates if you go to class, because they vanish. So I've got my four and a half inch strip. On the triangle, it says four and a half inches. I'm going to bring the triangle right to the very end of that strip that I've already neatened off. Guard off my rotary cutter, hand firmly on the triangle, and you cut up the diagonal edge. Lean slightly into it with the blade. When you get the end, guard goes on. There are triangles. Now, what I actually did, and this is a really neat trick, is I put my two fabrics right sides together. So I've already got them together right for sewing, so I can now sew down the diagonal line as I have done here. But let me show you how you cut the next set, because this is where the template flips over. And you might notice there's a little black bit on the bottom here. You have to arrange the template so the black bit hangs off the bottom. Now, the reason for that is this is saving you your three-eighths of an inch. I mentioned that it did. It's chopping off an ear. And what I particularly like about this triangle is it's multi-sizes. It's all sizes from one inch up to six and a half. Now, the thing one has to be aware of is although I'm cutting a four and a half inch strip, when I have sewn two of the triangles together to make a square, this will be four and a half inches raw edge to raw edge. When you take the seam allowance off, it'll actually be a four inch square. So how the triangle works is if you want, say, a three inch finished square, you cut a three and a half inch strip. If you want a five inch finished square, you cut a five and a half inch strip. 6 inch finished square, you cut a 6.5 inch strip. So you always cut half an inch bigger than the finished size of square. It's also great, this particular rule, if you just want to cut out odd triangles. So second one is placed onto there, a little bit hangs off the bottom, guard off your rotary cutter, zap up there. When you've done that, if you keep these two together, they're ready for stitching. And you are going to sew down the diagonal line, quarter of an inch seam allowance. Personally, I prefer to press my seams open and flat. Some people like to press the light, and etc., etc., but I'm an open and a flatter person. So if you get your fingers in there and open it nicely, you can run the iron along it. Suppose you were to make four of them, and here I've got four. Very quickly, you could arrange them in a series of designs. So there we have the pink square in the middle. I could turn it round and have one of those in the middle. I could make it do the pinwheel. And the pinwheel's easy to do if you put one on top of the other and rotate it through 90 degrees, because you can get in a horrible muddle with a pinwheel. So she's doing precisely the same thing. There we go. And this is what the DVD is going to take you through. Now, get that in the right place. The amusing thing about the DVD, and if you pause it and you've got two hours of me waffling on about you, my mouth is always open. For some <laughs> reason, my mouth is never shut. So if you pause it, you can see, oh, there the mouth is open again. To briefly show you how you would actually stitch, say, a block together, and this is the most complex block. This is the eight-pointed star, which is this one. I've used three-inch finished squares, so I cut, yep, you're quite right, a three-and-a-half-inch strip. And I made up the little blocks in the beginning, and here they are. And I chose to pinwheel them round. You get them round so they look like the picture. One, two, three, and number four. 
The way you stitch them together is take two, put them right sides together and join them. Now, the nice thing about these templates is because you're cutting accurately, is when you've joined them, with luck, if you did an accurate seam allowance, there should be a quarter of an inch from the raw edge to the top of those points. And you can actually see on the back just a little V in the colours, perhaps not too well here because of the colours are quite close to each other. But the base of the V is the top of those points on this side. So I would join two together and two together and then put these two to make the block in the middle. You could go on if you wanted to, and here's one I did earlier, there we go, and add the next part of the design, which is formed by taking three and a half inch cut squares. So that's where the square ruler comes in. So you can cut three and a half inches. So there's your three and a half inch line there. And the way that you would make up the star is you'll want four three and a half inch squares, which will go in the corners, one there, one there, one there, and all the sizes are on the little brochure that comes with the DVD, and I repeat them a zillion times probably. Then you want eight of these, and one goes there, there, and that's how you begin to build the design up. And to be quite honest, when you understand the basics of patchwork, and you've gone through how you do it correctly, you will have such a love of for your life. It, it is addictive, you can't stop doing it, you have to go on and on. It's one of those things that I fell into some 25, 30 years ago, and I have never lost my passion for doing patchwork. So that's your most complex design on the DVD. That's what you build up to, and it will take you through all the other things, from your strips to your squares, bit of applique, the whole lot is on that DVD. Well, uh, you see, I there you can see everything is rounded up. Every this is everything that you're going to get. Um, you're getting your three rulers that are in there. They were all explained perfectly. Perfect, perfect explanations. And if you're thinking, sitting at home going, that makes sense. Oh, only if I could just go back and watch that again. You're getting the DVD in there. You're getting the DVD in there as well. Two hours worth of material on that DVD. That will break everything down. Even if you started today and you just made that, that very simple triangle. You make the triangles, you open them out, you get that square. You start making your pinwheels, you start making your little stars that are in there as well, your hexagons, then you start playing already. £18 is what you're saving, £29 and 96 pence today is what you're paying. £29, 96 pence, yeah, £29 in here, 96 pence. In theory, you're sort of not paying for two of the rulers. Two of the rulers are sort of, uh, we're going to work it out probably, but in my maths, 15.97 for the rulers once you've taken the DVD on. So it's £15.97. So we're talking about a five, five for a ruler. You can't go wrong with that, can you? £29.96. Uh, little stop, I know it's early to say, but if you're starting someone on a crafting journey, what, what a set of rulers to have already. Maybe as a little gift coming up in the future as well. 538823 is your item number. Now, if you were liking those sets of rulers, I've got many more to come as well as we go on. Right then, next we're going to look at the double wedding ring. Now, at this looks nothing, I understand, but when you use it, it will all make perfect sense. If I swing this around though, what we're looking at is these just here. So you now can create these beautiful, beautiful uh, drinks. I think Jenny's got one of these, so we can actually see it in, in real life, as it were. Uh, look at this. We're on you now, Jenny, so we can just see. So what does the sets do? So it does those linking, basically the linking rings. Yes, this is the double wedding ring, but it's a mini version. And the design itself is this particular one here and it's made up of a center arced section and ovals. Now, I've just done the three, but you can go on adding and adding and adding until you know, you've got an enormous quilt. It's a design that is not perhaps for the very beginner, although I tell you something, if you do it by hand, it's actually seriously easy. And these days, you could cut the pieces out, you could go and sit in the garden, you, know, you can't go very many places, and just enjoy a bit of relaxing hand sewing. So, so it works a treat. So the double wedding ring, but this is a mini version. There's an added extra because instead of having a whole arc, you could, if you wanted to, 
and I'll explain all this in a moment, but actually change the arc for a load of little pieces. Oh. So think you could use up all your scraps. This could be a memories. Suppose you know somebody who perhaps um, were having a, a wedding, a you know, golden wedding, ruby wedding. You could do it in reds. You could do it in yellows. You could use up scraps from perhaps the children's clothes. This is ideal for as a memory quilt. You don't have to have it as a quilt. You could have it as I've got as a simple table runner. No, it is. And this is what I like about the world of soft craft and the world about sewing. You can take the smallest detail and it can mean so much to someone. By taking that small lock, if you're thinking, well, if I get them at home, what am I going to do with them? All the instructions are on the back. As Jenny was talking there, I was literally going uh, from point to point and working my way down to the finished quilt. It breaks it all down for you. It also shows you what each ruler does and how to use each ruler with full instructions on there as well. You really can't go wrong. And I'll for give 12 you a demo of that shortly, Adam, if you like. Say again, sorry? You can have a demo of that shortly. Oh, we will. We'll, we'll demo it. Well, do, do not fear, we'll have a demo of this, so see if you're liking this, pop it in your basket now, check out your baskets, and then you can sit back and relax, knowing in the knowledge that we're also going to be a, a live demonstration on this later, so don't go anywhere. Now, the next, this next bundle is one of these that, it's, it's one of those why not deals. Now, the reason I say that is you've got two books here for £11.98. If I take this one away, this on its own, is 11 99 You can buy this on its own today for £11.99. The details are now on the bottom of your screen. For a penny less, I don't know who's worked this out, for a penny less, you can get both books. Now, uh, let's go with Jenny's book first. Uh, Jenny, once again, it is a bit like the DVD and it breaks everything down. It works in full colour. If you flick through the book, you'll see it's all full colour. Each stage is done. Now, basically, it's called fans and fabrication because it covers a tactile, textured fan. My and then signed. it goes into some really useful things. There's a great way of using up your strips in soft sculptures, making bags and hats and things like that, table mats. Then there are various other silly things you can do with ribbons. It's got one or two funny tails going through it. Um, it's a full, fun, packed book, and it's not difficult to do. There's some seriously easy things to do at the end with patchwork. The other thing that it's got in it is, I'm afraid there are some funny stories, so you can read little bits about my life. So that's that book. But if you look at Karen's, now Karen, this is paper piecing. Now all of you know EPP, that's English paper piecing. This is great, because you'll be able to make these simple hexy flowers. And I have to take my hat off to Karen, because she has such a good idea. She's put all the templates in the middle of the book. So should you wish to photocopy them, or, take them out all you have to do is undo the staples and you can take out that entire sheet at the middle of the book it's an idea which i've sort of copied from my latest book but i hadn't thought of when i did fans and fabrications so if you want a book on twiddling fiddling and yet with some easy things in it particularly good ways of using up your scraps the fans and fabrications will be a treat if you want to add to that some english paper piecing and make some absolutely fabulous hexy flowers for a penny less why not I know, a penny less. How does, how does this work out? A uh, penny less, you can get both books. By all means, you can shop individually if you wanted to. But for a penny less, we are very busy for these at the moment. £11.98 on its own, eleven ninety nine. Just saying, it's worth going for. Uh, 157921 is your item number for both of the books. Now, another acrylic template set next is what we're looking at. So... We are getting, as you see here, uh, four uh, templates is what you're getting. So you're getting them once again. Once again, you get full instructions with them, so do not worry. Um, now, for me, once again, new to the world of soft craft, it's something I really love. I love watching. I find it really therapeutic to watch. Um, but it always looks difficult. But once again, that's where I'm trying to take the stigma out now. I'm the same as you. I sit at home and I watch. And I'm like, yeah, you are going to say that. That man on the telly is going to say it's easy. But it is. This is what I'm trying to get at. Once you've got the, I said this yesterday, I'll say it again today. Once you've got the right tools for the job, it makes the job easier. Have you ever tried, maybe you made, you've once tried saying, oh, I'll make a triangle, and you made your own template. Maybe it wasn't straight. Maybe you didn't cut it right. Right then, but when we get this home, Jenny, well, I'm, I've got my bundle home. What am I creating with this beautiful bundle? Right, we've got three very different templates there. You've got one which is called Flying Dees, which does half square and quarter square triangles. Okay. 
you've got one that is called trirex, which is a rather funny name for it, because basically it creates a square that's made up of a triangle in the middle, and the piece that is underneath your left finger at the moment, the smaller triangle, is one half of it. So two of those, either side of the triangle, make a square. I'll show you in a moment. Okay. And then on the end of that, mm. you've got the, I've now forgotten, oh, the Dresden plate. If we look at the quilt that is behind me. We can do that. This one. There we go, we're there. And on here, we've got the Dresden plate in the middle. Oh, and a piece of fluff. There you are. This quilt comes with added fluff. Then we've got your flying geese. These are quarter square triangles. These are half square triangles. And then round the edge, you've got what they call trirex. This also does a design called 5440 Fight or Flight, which is in purple behind you. Plus it does things like Storm at Sea and a wide variety of other things. So basically there are three very useful templates because one of the big problems about templates is making them. Because you've got to draw it up, protractors, compasses, find a bit of cardboard, add the right seam allowance on, cut it out. Then of course you can't cut brown cardboard with the rotary cutter. So it's all there. And the great thing about them, Adam, is they are multi-size. So you can have a one inch flying goose, a one by uh, two and a half inches uh, flying goose. You can have a three by six flying goose. You can have a four by eight flying goose. You can have Dresden plate enormous or very small. And the same with the Trirex, which makes this rather nice pointy board around the edge. So now we're looking at not just one template is what you're getting now. You are getting templates that will create various sizes all on the same tool. So gone are the days of making your own templates where you have a small, a medium, a large, and you think, well, actually, I want somewhere in between. I'm going to have to get out the protractor and the compass and the rulers again and do it all again. Where's those sharp scissors that I only use for cardboard that I can't use for my... No, 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 no. Wind it all back. Let's go back to basics. Start with the right tools, £21 and 97 pence. You're saving £13 on these as well. Uh, 307710 is your item number. Now, our final bundle that we have on the show as well. Once again, this is the petal that you're seeing here and the Simply Crazy. Now, there's a beautiful example of the Simply Crazy that we've got here on the side of it. It's sort of a little tea cozy. Now, to look at the tea cozy itself, are we talking intermediate to expert level here? No, we're talking rank beginners. <gasps> Give over. Yes, because all you've got to do is cut the shape out, find a load of scraps, you sew round and round and round the shape, just keep going round and round and round and round and round. You can add on, you can embellish, you can use any fabrics that you like. It's called Crazy Adam because it's crazy patchwork. So the real raw beginner can do that. So if you're a beginner, this, this, is, this is now your time to start actually, actually I am going to go, I'm going to go and get that sewing machine out that I had three years ago that I've only ever used once and give it a go. All those scraps of fabric that you've got sitting there because you keep buying but you're like, I don't know what to do with them, I don't know where to start, I don't know where to begin. Maybe this is your way to begin today. £11.98, 774-949 is your item number. Right then, you've seen everything I've got now. That's every single bundle. Remember, everything's available individually as well. Right then, we're going to go full demo heavy now with you. Um, so if you've got any questions, please mail them in studio at chanda.com. Uh, we'll get your questions to Jenny as well. Or sit back, relax, press record, um, because you know Jenny is a wealth of knowledge. Right, Jenny, what are we looking at this right, time? We're going to do the mini double wedding ring to begin with which is a one that I had and still have here. Okay. okay. So there is your mini double wedding ring. And you've actually got one entire ring and three ovals and a center and three ovals and a center. Now I went, I'm afraid, for the easy option because I went for using the whole strip, not the load of little pieces as I showed you earlier. But as a reminder, if you wanted to do this, and, and I've used the mill shop fabrics, which are absolutely fantastic, you could use up all the really, really tiny scraps. Uh, but just to go back to the crazy thing, the crazy template actually works also very well by hand. So, you know, you hand sew as you can get that out and you can embellish it, you can add beads, you can add lace, you can do what you like. So the crazy template does work extremely well. But the double wedding ring, it is going to require a six and a quarter inch square for the center. And that is where this little square ruler would be so useful. So cut out your six and a quarter inch square. Now the templates are slightly unusual. 
In the Sorry to chip in, is that the square ruler from the first bundle Correct. that we yes. saw already? So if you're thinking, well, where's that square from? How do I get hold of that square? That was in the first bundle, £10.99 pounds on its own, or you can get in that bundle with the DVD, remember, that's for, for £29.96. Pounds pounds. The details for that square and all the other uh, templates are at the bottom of the screen. Sorry to chip in, Jenny. That's all right, not a problem. Right, so this ruler, if I put my hand underneath, it might help you see a bit better, ha is a multi multi-tool I suppose is the best way. It will do the arc cutouts that you'll need to do on your centre square. It does the ovals and it does the little square. So it does three in one. In addition to that you will get the large arc template which is the one that I use because I cheated and you'll also get, well not cheating, I just took the easy option, you'll get the pieces to do the smaller sections that you could use up all your tiny scraps for. So that comes in with the set of templates. On the back of the set of templates, you will find there are instructions as to how you put it together. But sometimes it's actually nicer just to watch it. OK, I've got my six and a quarter inch square. Good idea is to press it in half and in half again, simply to find uh, the crease on the centre here, because on this template there's a little wee mark. And you are going to put, and it does say, line up on edge of six and a quarter inch square, so it's very clear. Line it up so the little mark in the middle of the template is bang on that pressed crease. Hold the template and you simply cut round the edge. Now you can use the regular 45 cutter or you might have a 28 mil cutter. Or of course if you haven't got a rotary cutter at all then draw round with your pencil. Top tip with pencil is hold the pencil at 45 degrees to get really close to the template and make sure you cut out technically on the line and certainly not inside the line. You're going to do exactly that to each of the four sides and it'll end up like I have the one I have here. So you end up with that. A very good idea, and it'll help you with the piecing there onwards, is to fold each of the sides in half on that crease and make a little tiny weeny nick. Make certain the nick is less than a quarter of an inch, so nick the middle. If you wish, although it's not wholly necessary with this bit, you could also just clip the curve. So on all of the sides, a little nick, nothing like a little nick, and clip the curves. That's the centre section. How are we going to cut the ovals out? Well, the oval requires a four and a quarter inch strip, and it's back to this part of the template again. Place the template on the strip of fabric, bring it to near the edge. I've got the strip of fabric folded, because I like to cut double. Guard off your cutter and simply cut round the arced edge, round there. Flip the fabric over, replace the template and cut again. And you can just go on cutting, cutting, cutting. You'll need four ovals for every single centre. When you've done that, we've got some little squares. Now, the quickest way to cut the little squares out is get your big ruler out. OK, comes with the first set. And if you cut a one and three eighths inch line, and before you worry about what one and three eighths is, sorry, one and five eighths, it's actually marked on the ruler. So you want a one and five eighth inch strip. That's slightly more than one and a half. Using the template again, back to this little end, place the square on the strip. I'm doing it from the right hand end. If you were left handed, it would look like that. And you cut up there and cut yourself some little squares. You will need two squares for each arc, eight squares for the entire oval of one wedding ring. Now with luck, you'll end up with these pieces. The oval also wants to be folded in half and another little nick in the sides. You do not clip the edges. I've got just the one single arc and another single arc and two squares. Now, before I go any further with this, just let me mention something that is important. Those other little bits, which I've now momentarily lost, where they've gone to, there they are. This is something, pin your ears back and concentrate, because it's the B templates, which go on the end here, must be cut out with the two fabrics that you choose right sides together, all right? So put two fabrics right or wrong sides together because you have to have a mirror image, all right? If you don't have a mirror image, it doesn't work. So B template, if you're using these ones, must be cut out with the fabrics folded. And then you would simply cut out three A's, join them together to make the arc, and that's a one of them there. Imagine I've done lots of that. I didn't. I went for the single one. So how are we going to piece it? Well, if you take the arc itself, one of them, fold it in half, and again, a little nick. Please, please nick gently. Do not overdo it. And clip along there. 
Move number one is to align the nick in the middle with the nick on, there's an awful lot of nicks in this, sorry if anyone's called nick. <laughs> Put a pin in the centre here, which I've actually done on this one. So having lined it up there, if you now flip it over and you're going to bring this end so it lines up with the flat end of my arced section there and he wants a pin. Don't ask me why they're male but they always are. Let's put a pin in it. Flex it round and do the same thing at the bottom. Flat, all right, so it goes flat. Pin it. And this is where you hand sew, so you just going to have a whale of a time because you'll just be able to sew a quarter of an inch. What I would be inclined to do is fan it out a bit and put a few more pins in it. When you've done that, you will sew all the way around the edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I've done it on this little one. And if you have pinned it and you've clipped it, it will fit an absolute treat. I'd press the seam open and flat. Right, the other side, which is the other arc, will need to have a square attached to either end. So take your other arc and you stitch a square onto either end. One square that end, one square this end. Now, watch point. When you put the square on, it will slightly line up so a bit hangs out either end. Little bit of blue there, little bit of pink there. Stitch it on and I'd press the seam open and flat. Then this bit gets attached to that in exactly the same way. Line up the middle bit, pin it. Watch when you come to sew it on round here, and hopefully I've got, here's one I did earlier, we have done an awful lot of these, is when you come to sew it round here, what you're lining up with is the seam between the pink and the blue lines up with that seam, but on the seam allowance, not on the edge of the fabric. So you line it up on the seam allowance. So check where the seam goes through. I would put a pin in it. When you stitch that all the way around, open it out and press it open and flat, as we have here. This was all done yesterday, so you could all see how it's done. You just keep on doing until you've made four of them. There we have four of them. You just have to pretend this one has been ironed. There we go. Once you've done all four for one arc, we need to stitch them on to a centre block. So back to the centre block. Let's find where I threw mine. And yet again, line up the nicks, nick to nick. Now, this is the most important part of the entire thing, is when you've got that lined up in the middle, bend it round and you want to sew it with this on top, so middle on top. And how it works is your stitching is not going to start here, it's going to start on the seam there. And stitch all the way round and finish on the seam there. With luck, you can see it on this particular sample. If I hold it there, can you see that I've started down a bit on the seam? You're leaving this little endy unstitched and finishing the other side. I would stitch one to one side, one to the other side, and then you're going to add the remaining two arcs, one there and one there. I've done it with a slightly different fabric, so let's move on to this one, because there's something I wanted to show you. Stitch the remaining two arcs on in the same way, but where you actually start the stitching is you want to start the stitching on the seam. Right, so stitch round the arc starting on the seam so the two seams will meet on the corner of the centre section. This bit gets left undone because the best way to sew this together is a sort of Y seam. Now, for many of you, you'll think, oh, Gordon Bennett, what's a Y seam? I'm actually teaching this in a Zoom class and you'll find those details on my website, myname.com. Um, the reason for doing that is it allows this section here to pivot and lie flat. So stitch the arc on and then return to this little section and finish off the seam. Finish off the seam as I have done here. Can you see I started there and I sewed to there. That means it lies nice and flat. So when you've got one arc done, you might say, oh, no, done enough now, I can't do any more. It would make a really good table mat. If you wanted to do more and say do the table runner that I had, I took the centre arc and then I added on to it a variety of other bits. So you'd need to have a middle, let's just take that pin out. I know these aren't all the same colour, but you can visualise it, hey, come on. And one of those, and one of those, and where's another one? There we go. One of those. So you stitch that section together and add it on. Ditto the other end. Now, something I'd like to share with you is I took a really easy way out yesterday. I thought there's no way do I want to bind this. So I decided to apply it to a piece of fabric. And the trick I used to get rid of the raw edge was to take a piece of interfacing, 
take my completed three circles, stick it onto the interfacing, so all the way around the outside edge of the interfacing, trim back the interfacing, slit the interfacing and turn it through. It's a trick I've often used on the Dresden plate and things like that. So round the edge, all the way round, all the way round. When you've done that, turn it to the right side, slit the interfacing and turn the entire thing through. You can then apply it to a plain piece of fabric and you will end up with something like this. And if you want to go on, you could make many, many more wedding rings. Just keep on adding and adding and adding. The world is your oyster. And that was literally a craft along in 10 minutes. How amazing was that? It is. It's one of these things. These are the acrylic templates that you're looking at at the moment. And this is where it all stemmed from. It all stemmed from these templates that you are looking at now. And that entire thing, obviously, fabric. We've got fabric on the show from Mill Shop Line. If you're liking the polka dots, they are on the show as well. Uh, jump to the website. But all of that stemmed from these four templates. 656000 is your item number. £12.99. And as our Jenny said, just play. Cut them out. Sew them together. Now, as we said before, this will all be on um, catch up uh, after the end of the show as well. So if you if you missed it and you were trying to scribble it all down, don't worry. It will all be on catch up about half hour once the show has finished. So it'll all be there for you. Right then, let's give you a quick wake up. Then we're going to go back over for another masterclass. I know I can see a craft along coming up. Can you? Can you? Oh, I can. A craft along. I can see it now. Um, I don't know when it will happen, but I, I think it'll be there. Right then, let's <laughs> let's crack straight on. So our beginners bundle. But whether you're not a beginner, or you're intermediate, or you're an expert, you're going to need to start from somewhere. And these are the perfect tools. Maybe yours have worn out, um, and you don't know what to do with them anymore. Have a new set. It's always good to have a second set. £29.96. Now, if we take off the price of the DVD, which is currently at the bottom of the screen at the moment, £15.97 for the three templates that you've seen. That way, spend about £5.32 per template. Five pounds and thirteen pence per template is what you're looking at. Well, five thirty-two, a couple of pence between friends. Then you've also got your DVD as well. Now we are talking two hours of knowledge on this DVD. I, yeah, I have learned so much in the last twenty-five minutes of this show already, and I've been here eight months. It says a lot, but. Um, it is, but it's down to tutorial, isn't it? It's, it's all down to the tutorial and how it's put across. And, and uh, Jenny won't mind me saying this. Jenny says it in layman's terms, a spade is a spade. It's like there's no message around, this is how it works, this is how you do it, and there's no other real way around it. Jenny's made it as simple as possible to do those little nicks here, little nick there, to help you along your way. You can't make it any more simple. And you know what? At the end of the day, it's only a bit of fabric. It's literally a bit of fabric. If you go wrong, cut another bit and we'll start all over again. Oh, there's a song there. But we're also busy on your books as well. Very busy on these books. Now, Jenny's book, let's bring in these details for the book on its own. The Jenny's book on its own is £11.99. A beautiful, glossy book full of imagery, full of stories, anecdotes. It's like having Jenny in the room with you. It really, really is. It takes everything back to basics, full colour pictures as well, so you're not really worrying on how they go. You've got lots of picture references, which ways the pin should go, which way should you sew. Half a seam here. I've learned so much about half a seam. If I want a three inch square, add on half a seam, cut it at three and a half. I never knew that. That will stay with me now. I know, it's little things like this though. But then, take Jenny's book, I mean, yeah, I'd want that, I'd want that. It's a good little read. I'll give you another book, but I'll take back a penny. I'll give you it for a penny less. It that. Gobbledygook, innit? Gobbledygook. Who puts this show together? A penny less and we're giving you a book? Oh, he does. Someone, someone's been on the hooch. But 
11 pounds and 98 pence for two books is what we are talking about. 157921 is your item number. Right, let's have a little fling through of um, your other book. Let's go straight to the center first. Uh, this is from Mac Aaron. Now, you've got your template. If I bend them forward because of the studio lights, you've got your templates in the middle, nothing on the back of your templates. Undo your staples, as Jenny said. Take that out. That is your templates good to go. Then, once again, examples of quilts that are in here. You've got the beautiful paper piecing that's in there as well. How to stitch it, how to do your finishes, the templates, the flower sizes that we're looking in here as well. All of this is a free book and I've taken back a penny. Well, you've kept a penny in short. You're in pocket, I'm down a book. I know. Ridiculous. Rid rid son, son's getting to someone. There'll be meetings after this. Everyone in the boardroom, keep your distance. I don't want to sit by you. But they will have meetings. We're, we're losing on this. I'm sure we are. £11.98, 157921 is your item number. Right then, I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm, I'm going to go for another masterclass. Right, sit back, enjoy. Get your pens and pencils at the ready. Here we go for another little masterclass. Jenny, what are we up to next? We're going to do the Dresden plates, but we're going oh. to just briefly look at the petal pattern because I think some people's eyes were a bit glazed over when I talked about the interfacing trick. So the interfacing trick was the putting of the design right side down onto interfacing. So all the way around the edge of the design and then cut the interfacing right back to the edge and if you've got any inward curves clip it. Then turn it to the right side, make a hole in the interfacing and that's when you turn it through. Alrighty? So that's how I turned the double wedding ring through and this indeed is the petal pattern which I'll very quickly turn through. No I won't, I'll show you what it looks like when it's been turned through and there is your petal pattern turned through and can be applied to something, all righty? So that's the interfacing trick. But back to the Dresden plate, because I know many of you have seen the Dresden plate before. OK, Dresden plate, you could have one with straight edges. It's a multi-size template. You can have them any size you like, from very big to very small. You can change the size of the center. So you could have a wheel. You could have more uh, Dresden plates, wider pieces with pointy edges. You could have very small if you wanted to. You could have a lot of plate, a little middle. Or you could have the reverse, a big middle and not a lot of plate. But what I wanted to show you was briefly how it actually works and then show you something different. Before I come to the actual plate, suppose you don't want to make a plate. If you just cut the pieces out, you could lay the pieces and they fit together and they make a row. Look, you could put two rows together and come up with that design. Seriously modern stuff, all right? So you don't have to think, oh, God, I've got to make a plate. I don't want anything round. How the Dresden plate actually works is cut your sections out. So briefly, I've got, again, a four and a half inch strip. I'm obviously into four and a half inch strips. On the plate, I have a choice whether to have a three inch middle or a much bigger middle by using a different section of the plate. I'm going to have a three inch center and actually start with the edge of the template on the edge of the fabric. There it is on the fabric, four and a half inches, and cut. You could cut this with your fabric double, treble, quadruple, the choice is yours. When you've done that, what happens then is fold the sections in half and it pays to very lightly press it, finger press it. Because what you're going to do then is sew across the short end. Now, I hope this doesn't confuse you, but we're going to change fabrics now. Sew across the short end, there we are, here's one I did earlier. Right, so I've stitched across the short end. Before you turn it right side out, it will pay you to clip the point off the seam to open it and finger press that seam open and flat. If you've got one of those little mini irons, you can probably get the mini iron in the middle there. I finger press often. Turn it right side out. When you've turned it right side out, use something like the blunt end of a barbecue skewer or some other thing like the bamboo pointer to point, get a nice little point on the end. Press it. The idea is the seam should line up with the crease down the middle. When you've pressed it, you're going to end up with a whole load of little pieces that look like that. And it will pay you then to stitch them together in sets of two. Watch point is when you come to sew them together in sets of two, start in a bit, start on the edge here, reverse to the top and back. And the reason for that is that holds it nice and tight. I would sew the plate together in sets of two. Now, if you're working with two colours, make sure you always have, say, the pink on the top, the pink on the top, the blue underneath. Once you've sewn all 20 sections, and it doesn't take very long, join them all together to make a circle. You'll then need something for the middle. 
and this is a three or three and a half inch circle and I tend to do it over card. So I cut a card circle, you could just draw around your coffee mug, cut the card circle out, hack out a piece of fabric somewhat larger, gather around the edge with preferably not black cotton but so you can see it, draw it up tight and stick it in the middle there. Now you could apply it now or you could get the background square and put the plate on top. Now top tip with the background square is to press it north and south west and east and diagonally because you can then put the plate on it and get the creases on the background aligned with the pieces on the plate. If I jiggle it enough it'll go in the right place. It's almost about right. Then you can put the circle in the middle. I would then stitch around that and extract the circle by cutting the fabric underneath. If you didn't want to do that you could have applied the circle at this stage and then put it on to the background fabric. It could be stitched in place or you could if you wanted to, if we go to the little one over there, if I bring it to you it's probably easier, you can see I've tucked pookie bits in underneath the Dresden plate and these are simply squares that have just been folded into smaller squares and tucked underneath so you could have a textural element. But what I wanted to show you was, oh, I did have a fun day yesterday, I was thinking how can I make the Dresden plate a little bit different? Well why not cut it out of a two-tone strip. Okay, so I've got two strips of fabric stitched here. Deliberately don't make them the same size because if you make them the same size you're going to have to match the seam up in the middle. So I went for a four and a half inch raw edge to raw edge strip. So this one was two and a quarter and that one was two and three quarters. Stitch them together, press the seam open and flat. That is de rigueur. You're just going to do that whether you like it or not because it's too lumpy bumpy otherwise. You can then cut it out using the template if you're feeling really rash, you could have the fabric folded. So cut it out like that. And then, my friends, when you do the same trick of folding it in half like that and stitching across the end, turning it through and then sewing them together in the right order, you get that. I thought that was really quite good. You could have had three strips. You could have had more. You could have had a bigger plate because it's all on the template. But another thing to do with the Dresden plate is, of course, the grandmother's fan because that's only five sections stitched together, which makes a quarter circle, because you've got 20 in the whole circle, so a quarter of 20 is five. And I've left this one deliberately unfinished, because if you've got the Dresden plate with a flat edge, not a pointy one, you have a problem of the raw outside edge. So that's where binding it. And do remember, when you come to put a binding on anything that's arced, it's got to be cut on the bias that's on the diagonal, on the squiff, 45 degrees across the fabric. I've used double binding here where I folded my one and a half inch strip in half, aligned the raw edges of the strip with the raw edges of my fan, i.e. my five sections of the plate, and then you fold this up and over and that conceals the raw edge. And you can stitch around it with something like a blanket stitch, top stitch it, zigzag stitch, fancy pattern, or even <gasps> perish the thought you could do it by hand. And of course, if you made it smaller, think of the designs you could play with. So you could actually have a little fiddle and have the design wandering across the work, doing all sorts of different patterns, and all it is was using the Dresden plate. Now think this, done in two colour fabrics. Think of it done in stripes. The potential for playing with that template, and indeed the two others you get, is amazing. And that to you, Adam. is just one template in the bundle where you are getting four templates. Is this slowly making sense now, what you can do with the amount of templates that you've got? Can I say something? What I've done is I've put on my website a link to some of the other templates so that people can go to there, put in the password that's on my website and you can watch. So if you haven't had a chance to see how the petal works or the other things work, they're all on my website for you to go and watch. I'll leave it there for a few days so you can feast on how to use all the templates. So now, not only are you getting templates, you're also getting video tutorials on how to get the best out of your templates, and that's free. That's, we're not even, I say, well, I use the royal we. Uh, we're not even, we're, you don't, normally you pay for tutorials. Normally, these classes, you, you have to wait on a waiting list. There's a long time to get there. You're getting templates and an online tutorial 
in the comfort of your own home. You haven't got to go anywhere. And once you've got the knowledge and know-how, the world really is your oyster because you can start creating some of the beautiful quilts that you currently see around myself and Jenny uh, as we flip back and forwards from each of the sets. Right then, we've only literally got, oh God, we've got five minutes left. Where does the time go? We're gonna do a quick recap of the counter. Right, our first, first little bundle. Each of these items I'm about to show you is also available individually. It's entirely up to you whether you wanna go for, but the bigger savings are in the bundles. These are the easy angle that we're looking at at the moment. Then you've got your square, your easy square junior that's in there as well. And then you've got your easy rule in there. Three necessary templates that you need to start your journey in easy patchworking. And then you're getting the DVD with over two hours of footage on there as well. Uh, the DVD on its own is worth $13.99. You do the maths for that. Your templates then work out just over five pound per template. 538823 is your item number, £29.96. Beginner level. If you're just starting, these are the ones for you. Well, more or less everything is, but some of it's gonna take a little bit more time to get used to. Right then, we're pressing on. Now this, we saw what we can do with these. These are those interlocking rings that we saw that looked really difficult and tricky to do. But once again, on the back of the patch again, it breaks everything down for you on how to get started, where to cut, where to cut, what to use, how to use, how big does your material have to be? Calm down. It's all there. Just take your time. For £12.99, you can be making some beautiful coasters, mats, runners, placemats, in materials that you want them to be in. This is the best thing about it. Uh, the details on the screen, 656000 is your item number. Books. Now, don't get me, don't get me started on these again. Jenny's book on its own. This one that you're looking at now, eleven pounds and ninety-nine pence. An amazing walk through of Jenny's life as she holds your hand through some of the toughest projects you'll ever face. But then, I'll give you another book and I'll ask for a penny back. I'll just keep your penny. You have your penny. I don't want it. Keep your penny. Eleven pounds and ninety-eight pence. I ask you, really. 157921 is your item number. You're getting both books and you're also saving a penny. I know you're not saying you're saving £10, but in theory you're getting this for free and a penny. I'm pressing on. Uh, get them while you can. Really, half the stock has already gone on those books. We joke, we laugh, but they're worth picking up because it is an amazing bundle that you're getting. Your next item, the bundle that we just saw, and we only saw the one of the templates being used. You've got another three in your set. £21.97, 307710 is your item number. You're getting so much. What I also like as well is you do get full instructions uh, with each of the rulers as well. So each of the rulers comes with a pattern guide and it also gives you instructions of what to do with them. So you're not on your own when you get these home. And as Jenny just said, she's also gonna put them on her website as well. Um, so you can uh, indulge yourself into these and really lose yourself into the world of patchworking and quilting. Cause I know once you're in there, you really won't wanna come out. 307710 is your item number. Just works out to be just over seven pounds per tool set. Now, if you're thinking, seven pounds, see what you did with one. And look at the quilts you can make with just one of those tools. And remember, if you're banking to sell as well, you're easily gonna make your money back with these as well. Uh, little babies, blankets, stuff like this. Oh, we've only got two minutes left. Petals we're talking about next, and the crazy square, the crazy, the, the crazy square. Uh, they're simply crazy. You can do so much with them as well. £11.98, 774949 is your item number for these. Once again, yes, we haven't touched them on the live hour. Uh, jump to Jenny's website. She'll guide you through everything. Do not fear. Um, there's also that Zoom class as well. If you want to take part in the Zoom class, jump to Jenny's website as well. You can find more about the Y seam in there with a full Zoom class. £11.98, 774949 is your item number. Where's the time gone, Jenny? We've got like 30 mm. seconds left. I, I want you to show how to do the use the trirex which is here if i get it the right way around they can see it so you could do that or you could do that or you could do hey storm at sea because it's multi-sizes you know that's just one of those three templates in the dresden plate flying goose one um and that 
to the goo. I think absolutely fantastic, Adam. It is great to be here. Oh, it's we're so. I when I saw your name on the schedule, I, I asked the question: when, Is it the the real one? Is it the Jenny that we're getting? Uh, we've had some beautiful emails as well, welcoming you to the wonderful world of Achanda. We've had some from Karen, uh, from another Kaz, uh, Margaret. You. We've had loads of emails welcoming you. you to the world of Achanda. Um, I think we should push for a, maybe a two-hour show and a craft along oh, two hours. this huh? year. Would I ever cook? I know, but your prep is amazing. We were all saying, that's why we didn't talk. Your prep is phenomenal, how you do each of the stages as well. You really do break it down. Um, so all applause for Jenny as well. It's really easy to follow as well. I reckon I could have a little go at this. I think with the confidence that I've got, and I'm not just saying this, you know what I'm like, I say it as it is. Um, I reckon I could, have a, I could have a little go at this. I think I'm there. I think my confidence is building. Uh, Thank you, Jenny. Hopefully Thank next you. time we'll be next to each other and we can cuddle. Uh, don't you go anywhere. There's so much more to shop for here on the wonderful world of Achanda.